I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Folks, I'm super excited today because Betaflight 4.0 has finally released. And I love going through the release notes of the new version of Betaflight to see all the stuff that the devs have changed. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go through the release notes. We're going to look at the new features, what's changed, what's been added. And if you, like me, are super excited about the new release of Betaflight, this is the video for you. But I know that some of you guys out there are super annoyed when a new version of Betaflight comes out and everything has, seems to have changed. To which I say, feel free to just pretend that Betaflight 4.0 doesn't even exist. I'm not being sarcastic. Nobody's forcing you to upgrade. And if you've got a quad and you love how it flies on 357 or there's still people out there flying 350 or 3.4, if you're happy with how it flies, nobody's forcing you to upgrade. But if you're excited about this new release, if you want to find out what's been added and if it's even worth it to upgrade, this is the video for you. Just to be clear, this video is a release overview. I do one of these every time a new version of Betaflight comes out where we go through the release notes and just give you a big picture overview of all the stuff that has changed. And typically these are pretty long videos. So I'm gonna put a table of contents down in the video description. If there's a particular feature that you're curious about, you can jump right to that section of the video. There will be additional follow-up videos going into depth on many of these topics. So in case you're wondering, um, we can't go into depth in all of these topics in one video. It would be hours and hours long. Let's do the release overview though. And whenever Betaflight makes a new release, it shows up here on github.com, Betaflight slash Betaflight slash releases. That's where all the releases are. And Betaflight 400 is the latest release. And that's where you can read the release notes for Betaflight 400. Before we get before we get too far in and some of you guys tune out and stop watching, I also want to show you this page, Betaflight 4.0 Tuning Notes. So this is the Betaflight Wiki, which gives you specific like tuning suggestions for Betaflight 4.0. And a lot has changed. So if you're going to go from an earlier version of Betaflight to 4.0, do not just paste in all your old PIDs, all your... Start with the defaults, read the tuning guide, and I'll make videos about tuning it as well. But do not think that you can just paste in your old stuff and have it work the same. It is not the same. A lot has changed. Hopefully for the better. <laughs> anyway. So the first thing we'll talk about in this release is unified targets. And unified targets is not going to be something that you, a typical user, will interact with. But it is going to be something that will significantly improve the ease of use of Betaflight for you. You see, right now, if a manufacturer makes a new flight controller and they want to have a custom something customized about the flight controller, like a different default set of PIDs or a different default setting, they have to make a new target. In other words, right here in the Betaflight configurator in the firmware flasher, you need to pick a different board type for that particular target. And that's freaking annoying because for just changing one tiny little thing, there is this, all this administrative overhead where the Betaflight devs have to compile a whole new target just for that one little change. And what it means is that a lot of times manufacturers don't bother or the Betaflight devs just say, no, nah, no, that's not a big enough change to justify all the work we'd have to do to add this new target. Right now, the devs are maintaining, I think I've heard, over 150 targets. Unified targets will mean that manufacturers and Anybody really, not just manufacturers, you can create a new Betaflight target with its own default settings, pin assignments, all the stuff that goes into those target files and flash it through the configurator without the Betaflight devs having to do any administrative work. And this is pretty cool. If you have a custom set of PIDs that you like, or if you help people out like I do and you want to send somebody uh, a target with like so soft serial remapped to LED strip, you can do that. You don't have to walk them through the CLI commands. You can just create a custom target, which they'll flash, and everything will be done for them. It's pretty exciting to support people and nerds like me, anyway. The first of the major features in Betaflight 4.0 that we'll discuss is bidirectional D-shot and RPM-based filtering. 
Filtering is one of the major ways that developers have gotten multi-rotors to fly better. And filtering, in case you don't know, means that you take the vibration that's being created by the motor spinning around and you get rid of that vibration so the PID controller can see the, what the quad is actually doing and make it move the way that it's supposed to move. Getting rid of that motor noise makes the quad fly better. And what RPM-based filtering does is the ESC reports the motor RPM directly to the flight controller and the flight controller can then filter on that frequency very quickly and accurately. This is a very new feature and in fact you have to, as of today, you have to flash a pre-release beta version of BL Heli 32 to your ESCs before this will even work. So this is supported in beta flight 4.0 but it is not enabled by default and that's a good thing because it's still pretty preliminary. There have even been bugs in BL Heli that caused ESCs to go to full throttle and some people got cut. So this is not enabled by default. It is still pretty preliminary. It doesn't work great on every single build. It's exciting that Betaflight supports it and if you feel adventuresome, you may try it out, but it is actually not ready for prime time as of Betaflight 4.0, but it is there. A new way of managing the D-term has been added in Betaflight 4.0. It's referred to as D-min. The problem with the D-term is that when D-gain in the PID controller is too low, the quadcopter will fly really badly. Specifically, it'll have a lot of prop wash oscillation in sharp turns, and it'll have bounce back at the end of sharp flips and rolls. But if the D-gain is too high, you end up with hot or even smoked motors. And a lot of times you can't raise the D term as high as you really would need to, to fix the quadcopters prop wash and bounce back without getting the motors too hot. So you've got quadcopters that aren't flying as well as they could. The D min function reduces the D gain dynamically during times when the quadcopter is not flying very aggressively and then boosts the D gain during times when the quadcopter is flying aggressively. And what this means is that you can raise your D gain to the high enough level that flips and rolls have sharp stops and prop wash handling is great, but your motors will still stay cool because most of the time you're not doing sharp stops or rapid turns. Most of the time you're doing smooth, stable flying. Well, for most of us anyway. So D min lets you raise your D gain without getting hot motors is the gist of it. Dynamic gyro and D-term filtering. Now these low pass filters are essential for getting rid of motor noise. Uh, we talked about how the RPM filter tries to get rid of the motor noise, but it's not enough all by itself. And a low pass filter is basically like rolling off the treble on your car stereo. That's the analogy I like to use. The motor noise is up around 350 hertz or higher. The quadcopter's actual movements are down around say 80 or 50 hertz or lower. So by having a low pass filter, we get rid of the motor noise and we preserve the actual quadcopter movement. But the problem is that that low pass filter adds a lot of latency and that makes the quadcopter fly worse. Reducing latency is one of the major ways that quadcopters are made to fly better these days anyway. We've gotten rid of most, we've, we've accomplished a lot of the other advantages and reducing latency is one of the single biggest things that developers do to make quads fly better. So what the dynamic gyro and D-term low pass do is when the throttle is low and the motors are spinning slower, the, the cutoff for the low pass filter is lowered. In other words, you get more aggressive filtering and more latency and worse handling. But when the, when the throttle is low, the quad is probably not doing any aggressive maneuvers. And so the fact that there's more latency in the PID loop, you don't really notice it. As you raise the throttle, the cutoff for the gyro and D-term low pass is dynamically raised, which reduces latency, improves handling, and you get less filtering. But since the motors are spinning at a faster RPM, you don't need as much filtering anyway. If the motors are spinning at 650 hertz, having filtering down at 100 hertz is excessive. So it dynamically raises and lowers the gyro and D-term low pass based on the throttle position, which means that you get better prop wash handling basically, just mostly for free. Launch control. 
Launch control is used mostly by racers to preload their quad before they take off at a race. So think about a racer. If you're a racer, you know what this is. But for those of you who don't race, what you're going to do when you take off is you're going to pitch forward to whatever your cruising angle is, which is controlled by your camera up tilt. You're going to pitch forward and you're going to race throttle and take off. Well, what some racers like to do is preload the quad by pitching forward before the starting gun and then boop, they are already at that angle. It means they get a faster start and they're more likely to get to the very first gate before all the other guys crash. What launch control does is uses the accelerometer to set a pre-configured angle, exactly the same angle every time. See, uh, launch control is something that's existed in Flight 1 for a long time. I, as far as I know, Flight 1 was the first to implement it. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But the way that Flight 1 launch control worked and perhaps still works, I'm not sure, is that it allows the quad to hold the angle, but you have to manually set and control the angle. Whereas Betaflight's launch control uses the accelerometer to hit the same angle every time, giving racers a more consistent takeoff. If you're not a racer, this probably isn't going to excite you very much, but it is a pretty cool feature to see the quad go and just sit there waiting for you to go. Switchable OSD profiles. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. I've been asking for this for a while. I've been whining about this for a long time and they finally did it. Switchable OSD profiles means that you have three different profiles for your OSD that you can set up. So for example, you might have profile number one as like a bare bones racing profile with just voltage in the lower left and nothing else. Then you might have profile number two. Oh, maybe with some GPS here. Let's take a look here. Profile two. Maybe we can set up some GPS parameters or, you know, I don't know, whatever. Here's for my G when I'm, when I'm using GPS. Okay. And then profile number three, you could just set up individual profiles. And then in the in-flight adjustments, you can set up an in-flight adjustment to switch between OSD profiles, allowing you to switch your OSD configuration with an aux switch on your transmitter. Similar to the switchable OSD profiles, switchable LED strip profiles have been added as well. For those who like to run different, lots of LEDs with different settings, this is gonna be really exciting. I wanted to show you this, but I went to the LED strip tab and I don't, I don't see it. I don't see the ability to change profiles anywhere. And if we look at a config dump, what do we see? I don't play with LEDs that often to tell you the truth. Here we go. LED. Do we see any indication of LED profiles? No. It doesn't say like LED profile one, LED profile two. What if we do dump all? I do know that not all boards are going to have program space to support LED profiles. And in fact, if you've got an F3 board, it doesn't support LEDs at all. There's not enough program memory to hold it. This is an F4 flight controller. Maybe it just means that, I'm trying to look around if I have an F7 handy. Maybe it just means that F4s don't have LED profiles. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Stick overlays in OSD. I don't know about you, but I don't call this a minor feature. This is super exciting. Here in the OSD tab, you have the ability to enable stick overlay left and stick overlay right. Let's just switch this to profile three and we'll see what that looks like. We've got, oh my gosh, are you for real? <laughs> and a real live stick overlay right in your DVR. No black box recording needed. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> This is something that until now, only the Brain FPV Radix have been able to do because it has graphical OSD. But the Betaflight devs managed to implement it with character-based OSD on any Betaflight flight controller. You should know that in order to use this feature, you will need to upload a new font file. You'll do that by going to the OSD tab, and then click Font Manager. You do need to make sure that your quadcopter is plugged in or this step won't work and you'll just hit upload font and upload the new default font. It has some new little characters that are used to implement this function. Profile switching based on battery cell count. This feature is really exciting for anybody who flies a quad with different cell voltages. So if you've got a Mobula or a trash can and you fly on both 1S and 2S, or if you've got a quadcopter with maybe 2150 kV motors and sometimes you fly on 5S, sometimes 4S and maybe sometimes 6S. 
What this does is it automatically selects a different rate and PID profile depending on the cell voltage that's detected when you first plug in the battery. So if you want slightly reduced PIDs for your 6S quad, if you want your Mobula to have a different throttle scaling when you plug in 2S to kind of bring the power down a little bit, that can be done automatically instead of you having to switch profiles manually. Very nice feature. This is was I remember this was requested in a particular uh, blog post and the devs saw and responded and implemented it. Very exciting. So these are the major and some of the minor improvements to Betaflight 4.0. There are a ton of other things that have been done that are sort of underneath the hood. And we'll go into more of those in the individual videos where we talk about tuning specific features of Betaflight 4.0. The goal as always is to make more quads fly better than before. However, you should know that the Betaflight devs have been a little bit more aggressive in tuning the defaults of Betaflight 4.0. My guess is that they got tired of hearing people say, Flight 1 flies better, so much better than Betaflight. Betaflight has always been really conservative in its default PIDs because we'd rather have somebody's quad fly a little bit worse than have somebody else's quad smoke a motor or fly to the moon. Hmm? Well, that's the choice they've made. In Betaflight 4.0, the defaults are more aggressive. And in fact, some people are having quadcopter flying to the moon problems and if you look at the Betaflight 4.0 tuning notes, you can see that there are different sets of uh, presets, basically, to get different goals, including <laughs> one that makes the filters a little bit more aggressive and helps prevent against flyaways. I've even heard some rumors that the devs may be making the defaults a little bit more conservative for Betaflight 4.1, which, of course, they're working on now. But for now, Try flying Betaflight 4.0 and see if you like it. I've flown it and it flies very different than 357. It's almost like the devs were trying to emulate Flight 1 sim mode. Well, I don't know what their intention was, but it has a similar kind of tightness to sim mode without feeling stiff or unresponsive. It almost feels like somebody turned up the spring tension on my gimbals and I'm not sure if I like it, but it, I, it's interesting. It's interesting. If you don't like the way Betaflight 4.0 uh, flies, definitely go and check out some of these other uh, tuning suggestions, including one, I've got a perfect tune on 3.5. I just want it to fly the same. And if you put this stuff in, you should be able to reuse your 3.5 PIDs and get approximately the same feel. So look for more Betaflight 4.0 content coming up in the coming weeks as I dive in and I bring you guys along with me. That's always been my motivation. In the meantime, let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite feature of Betaflight 4.0? Are you excited about 4.0 or are you just like, ah, screw this, I'm staying with 357. I'm kind of, I did the first real deep dive in 4.0 yesterday flying the same quad on 357 4.0 and trying a bunch of these different 4.0 presets and i gotta say i mean maybe it's just what i'm used to but i kind of like the 357 i but i'm gonna give 4.0 a fair chance if only so i can report on it for you let me know what you think though if this video has been helpful for you can i remind you that this is my full-time job uh yeah helping you understand betaflight 4.0 better taking you through the process that's what i do and if you value that, can I remind you that I have a Patreon where you can give me a couple bucks a month as thanks. Uh, if you feel like I've earned it, the link is in the video description. And the other major way that you can support me is by using affiliate links. There's no affiliate links on this because there's no products in this video. But at the bottom of my page, uh, there's usually affiliate links to the products in the video. And if you click those links before you make any purchase, not just the linked item, any purchase from Amazon, Race Day Quads, Rotorite Store, Get FPV, all the affiliated vendors, you can click that link, make a purchase, and I get a small commission. It's a little bit, but it does add up. Thank you guys so much. Happy flying.